We've talked about a few different distributions that are formal, have fancy names, as opposed to just a histogram I might draw for fun. The normal distribution is one, and the normal distribution is specified by its mean and variance. What do I mean by specified? If you tell me that you're thinking of a normal distribution with mean 3 and variance 5, I know exactly what that picture should look like. We've also talked about t distributions. t distributions are specified by their degrees of freedom. We've said that a t distribution with a very large number of degrees of freedom, a really big degrees of freedom, looks essentially like a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance 1. But the smaller the degrees of freedom, the bigger the tails on that t distribution. So if you tell me you have a t distribution with 13 degrees of freedom, then I know exactly what that t distribution should look like. Similarly here, if you give me two pieces of information, you'll have specified the f distribution that I should use as my reference distribution for this particular test. The two pieces of information I need are called degrees of freedom numerator and degrees of freedom denominator. Where am I going to find those? Right here. i minus 1, n minus i. Where did I get those from? Well, my f statistic is the ratio of something that has an i minus 1 in it and something that has an n minus i in it. The reference distribution that we use for this particular f test is the f distribution with i minus 1, comma, n minus i degrees of freedom. F distributions will always look something like this. They'll always be positive, right? Given the way I calculated these numbers, we couldn't get something negative. The sums of squares will never be negative. So no matter what you divide them by, they'll never be negative, right? So only positive values are possible for F statistics or F distributions. What that implies is that there's no discussion of a one-sided versus a two-sided test in the context of an F, because we're only surprised by this kind of data if the numerator is big relative to the denominator. Right? So I want to reject the null if the between sum of squares is really big relative to the within sum of squares. But I do not also want the opposite. If the between sum of squares is really small relative to the within sum of squares, in other words, if I have an f statistic on the left side of this distribution, I do not want to reject. That's actually very consistent with my null hypothesis. So unlike the t-tests or the, the z-test where you think of the two possible tails where we'd be surprised either if the difference is big or if the difference is small, here we're only surprised by our data assuming the null is true, if this ratio is big. We're not surprised if it's small. So there's no such thing as a one-sided or two-sided test for the f-test. Another thing that's important to note is that if you only had two groups and you did a pooled t-test, you did a pooled t-test, so you're assuming the variance is the same in those two groups, you'd get a certain t-statistic and you'd get a certain p-value. If you took that data set and ran an F test instead, note that the F test also assumes that the variance is the same in each group. So it's the same assumption underlying the T test. The F test also assumes that each population is actually normally distributed, just like the T test does. The F test also assumes independence within and between groups, just like the T test does. So the assumptions are identical. And if you do this F test, you're going to have an F statistic and a p-value. It turns out that if you do that, you'll have conducted exactly the same test. The p-values will be exactly the same from an f-test or a pooled t-test conducted on the same two groups. The f-statistic that you obtain will be exactly equal to the t-statistic from the pooled test squared. If you only have two groups, the f is equal to the t squared. All these distributions are related to each other in important ways. And that's why we use this particular statistic to summarize how different the groups are from each other, as opposed to some other statistic that we might come up with. Because if we come up with a statistic that, under the null, follows an F distribution, that's very related to t-tests. It's just a generalization of a t-test, which is exactly what we were hoping for.